This video is part two in our three part series on floating point binary. In this video, we take a look at normalization. So as we just said, this video covers how to normalize floating point binary numbers. We introduced the concept of floating point binary in the previous video. If you've not yet seen it, go back and watch that first. So consider the following three examples of typical floating point numbers. We've written them on the screen. In each example, we're going to use five bits for mantissa and three for the exponent. Both the mantissa and the exponent are stored in two's complement. Let's convert these numbers into base 10 deanery. So first, let's convert 00100010. Our exponent's two telling us we need to move the binary point of the mantissa two places to the right. We can now ignore the exponent, apply our normal binary number line to the new number, and we discover this is actually the deanery number one. So we've worked out the first one, this one's one. Okay, let's look at the second one. Our exponent this time is three, telling us to move the binary point in the mantissa three places to the right. We can now ignore the exponent, apply our normal binary number line to the new number, and we discover the deanery number of one. Now for our third number, the exponent is one, telling us to move the binary point in the mantissa one place to the right. We can ignore the exponent, apply our normal binary number to the new number, and we discover the deanery number of, surprise, surprise, one. So these three examples of typical floating point numbers all represent the deanery number one. Now, in fact, there's an infinite number of ways to represent the number one using floating point notation. However, the number of bits that we can use for the mantis for an exponent will limit the number of possible combinations in any given format. The fact we can represent a number in many different ways is clearly a problem. We need a consistent way of storing floating point binary numbers. So there's only one way of representing any given number. To do this, we normalize the number. Besides having a consistent way to represent numbers, another advantage of normalized floating point binary is the insurance we're storing numbers with the highest possible degree of accuracy in the format we've got. So it's really easy to spot a normalized floating point binary number. All positive normalized numbers start with 0, 1. All negative normalized numbers start with 1, 0. Going back to our previous example, the third number therefore is the correct representation of the number 1 in 8 bits using the format shown. Therefore, the third version is said to be normalized. So let's ha see how we could store the base 10 deanery number 6.5, but in this video, in normalized floating point binary. So first we write out 6.5 on a standard fixed point number line. That's a four plus a two is six, plus a half is 6.5. Next, we move the binary point so it sits between the first 0 and 1. Remember, normalized positive numbers start 0, 1. So we have moved it three places to the left. Now, as we've moved the binary point three places to the left to get it to its normalized position, that means we're going to have to move it three places to the right to put it back to the correct position. So we know our exponent must be positive three, and you've got to be careful with that in the exams. So using our format of three bits for the exponent stored in two's complement, an exponent of three would be zero, one, one. A two plus a one is three. The last stage is to store the mantissa, which is simply the number from the original number line. Remember it must starting zero, one. We now have the correct representation of the deanery number 6.5 in this format using normalized floating point binary. 
we can check if we've stored 6.5 correctly by trying to convert our answer back to deanery. So our exponent is 3, telling us we move the binary point in the mantissa three places to the right. We're left with 0110.1. We apply our normal binary weighting line, add up the columns with ones. 4 plus 2 plus a half, 6.5. So we can be sure we've stored that correctly. OK, this time let's store the base 10 deanery number 2.25 as a normalised floating point binary number. So first we just write out 2.25. So one in the two column and a one in the quarter column. OK, so that's done. Next, we move the binary point so it sits between the first zero and one. Remember, normalised positive numbers start zero, one. So we've had to move it two places to the left to achieve this. As we move the binary point two places to the left to get it to its normalised position, we will have to move it two places to the right to put it back in the correct position. So our exponent must be positive 2. Using our format of 3 bits for the exponent stored in 2's complement, positive 2 is 0, 1, 0. The last stage is to store the mantissa, which is simply the number from the original number line, remembering that it must start 0, 1. We now have the correct representation of the deanery number 2.25 in this format using normalised floating point binary. Again, we can check if we've stored 2.25 correctly by converting it back. So our exponent's 2, telling us to move the binary point in the mantissa two places to the right. Positive exponents move to the right. We're left with 010.01. Apply the normal binary weighting line, add up columns with ones. We have a one in the two column, a one in the quarter, 2.25. Let's look at an example of a negative number. So how would we store the base 10 deanery number negative 2.5, minus 2.5, as a normalised floating point binary number? OK, so the easiest way is to start by actually writing out the positive version of the number. So that's easy. There's there's positive 2.5, uh, one in the two column and one in the half column. Now we convert 2.5 to minus 2.5. And we've covered this in a previous video. You literally start on the right hand side with the least significant bit and copy each bit as it appears up to and including the first one. And then all the other bits you swap. Zero becomes ones and ones become zeros. OK, so we've got our negative version of 2.5. So next we move the binary point so it sits between the first one and zero. Remember, normalised negative numbers start one zero. So we moved it two places to the left. As we moved it two places to the left to get to the normalised position, we'll have to move it two places to the right to put it back in the correct position. So we have an exponent of positive 2. And in our format of 3 bits of the exponent using 2's complement, positive 2 is 0, 1, 0, as shown here. The last stage is to store the mantissa, which is simply the number from the original number line, remembering that it must start 1, 0 because it's negative. We now have the correct representation of the deanery number minus 2.5 in this format using normalised floating point binary. Again, one more time, we can check if we've stored minus 2.5 correctly. So our exponent was 2, telling us we need to move the binary point of the mantissa two places to the right. We're left with 101.10. .10. Apply our normal binary weighting line, add up columns with ones. So we've got a minus 4 plus a 1 plus a half which is minus 2.5. So let's have a look at one final tricky example of a negative number. How would we store the base 10 teenery number minus a quarter, minus 0.25, as a normalised floating point binary number? So the easiest way is to start by writing out the positive version. So that's easy. It's a quarter. It's just a one in the quarter column. So that's done. 
We now use our little method to flip the positive number to a negative. Start on the right, copy the digits out as they appear up to and including the first one, and then swap everything else. Ones become zeros and zeros become ones. So now we have negative 0.25. Next, we move the binary point so it sits between the first one and zero. Remember, normalized negative numbers start one zero. So this time we've moved the binary point two places to the right. As we had to move the binary point two places to the right to get it to its normalized position, we'll have to move it two places to the left to put it back in the correct position. So now we know we're going to need a negative exponent. So our exponent will need to be minus two. Using our formats of three bits for the exponent stored in two's complement, minus two would be one one zero. Minus four plus a two is minus two. The last stage is to store the mantissa, which is simply the number from the original number line, remembering it must start one zero. We now have the correct representation of the deanery number minus 0.25 in this format using normalized floating point binary. Note how we had to backfill the mantissa there with a few zeros. This is fine as zeros are not numerically significant. Again, we can check if we've got this correct. So our exponent was minus two. And this tells us we need to move the binary point of the mantissa two places to the left. Now, we can't easily move the binary point off the left hand side of our screen visually. So let's just slide the bits across two places instead. This has exactly the same effect. Now we have some empty bits on our number line that we need to backfill. Now, as the number is negative and starts for one, we backfill with ones. So we're left with 1.110000. We apply the normal binary waiting line and add up any columns that have ones in. So we have minus one plus a half plus a quarter, which gives us minus 0.25. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How does a computer store fractions or real numbers? And what do we mean by normalized floating point binary number?